On today's 10 Factor Podcast, we are joined by guest Pete Epic. Hey, it's Tim Michael. Welcome to The 10 Factor, where entrepreneurs learn how to use their expertise to build and scale a thriving business. After 12 years in corporate management and then another 10 as an entrepreneur, I got tired of living week to week, so I made a change. Obsessed with the ins and outs of a successful business, I honed my expertise. I talked to a ton of successful entrepreneurs. I designed a roadmap. I started a podcast and I wrote a book. Put it all together and you have the 10 factor. Now, sit back, relax, turn on your ears and take away some awesome value. Ready, set, go. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of the 10 Factor Podcast. If you're tuning in today for the first time on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, tune in, any of the other platforms you you catch your podcast on, it would be awesome if you'd go ahead, hit the subscribe button while you're there and go ahead, take a minute, share your thoughts with a great review. I'd like to encourage you to take a simple step. I've put together something that I feel is is just critical for entrepreneurs. It's a 10-factor personal assessment. It's nine nine pieces of your business that um, if you can figure out where you're at uh, starting today, it allows you to, to take the steps to get your business and your life to the next level. So our guest today, I'm going to introduce him, Pete, Pete Evick. He's a father, an entrepreneur, a producer, a songwriter, a published author, and a musician. He's all, an all-around rock star founder of Shining Soul Candle Company. He's rooted in Manassas, Virginia. He's very proud of that. He's generous with his time and he supports the local business community there. So a Virginia boy at heart with tight, strong ties to his hometown. He's a multi-talented musician producer who, in addition to playing guitar in the Brett Michaels band, has also served as a co-songwriter, producer, mixer, and musical director for the group and his, his own band, which is Epic. A man with a true entrepreneurial spirit, he pursues his own projects, which have included the conception of an all-digital record company called Potomac Records, which has been turned over to his close high school friend, Mike Bailey, and a new environmentally conscious candle company, also based in Virginia, called Shining Soul Candle Company. Pete's also a published author. His book, The Moments That Make Us, can be found on Amazon or can be purchased in the retail store, which, which is on Center Street in, Man- in Manassas. And although Pete is an award-winning producer, his biggest role in life, and this is awesome, remains that of being the best father that he can to his two boys. So, Pete, that's that's just awesome, especially the ending there about being the best father he can to the two boys. So, welcome to the Ten Factor. Thank you, man. That's uh, that's really the only part that matters is being a good father. Everything else is just a means to doing that. I think. I I I, I think you're right because I I've got three kids of my own, and it, it's just uh, it. You know, you think back to when you're when you're a little bit younger and you, you don't have the the responsibilities and and life just kind of happens. And then as as it progresses and you start to to leave that legacy, it's uh, it's pretty incredible the power that you have, but also the responsibility that comes with that. And Absolutely, the responsibility. And when it hits you that it is the responsibility, and what the re- what the responsibility really is is um, the, the, I think that. Being a father means a lot to different people, but uh, at some point in all fatherhood, that that moment of responsibility hit, like you said, hits you what it really means to be. I uh, I had an ex bass player who uh, played with me for several several years, and he's also a school teacher. And uh, when he had his son, he kept going. I've only got eighteen years, and I, at first I didn't quite get where he was going, and then maybe. 10 years ago, we talked, he goes, he looked and he goes, I've only got eight years left. 
to teach him everything he needs to know. And he used it like a countdown clock. And that second time when he told me I've only got eight years left, it hit me really hard because then I started going, whoa, I've only got about that time left too. Did I do this? I, it, it was very impactful on my life to take that responsibility almost like a clock. You're clocking in with a job, with a deadline. Yep. And then the reality is that that's just the beginning of that. That's like one season. And then, then you, you've got them the rest of your life. It's not like they're going away, but you're right. You're trying to prepare them to go out and, and create their own family and and do things um, that you did well to to complement that and things you did not so well to, to try to, to learn from that. And that, that's the response. Yeah. It, it's scary right now. It's, it's, it's in business and in parenthood and everything. It's such a unpredictable ocean where we're sailing on right now. No, no one, no one can see the future of anything right now, really. It's it, the unpredictableness is, is, is frightening. And part of the reason that I started the candle company was to try to prepare my kids to have that entrepreneurial spirit and understand, you know, how to survive and and make make money on your own without having to worry about the uh, joining the workforce. Uh, you know, obviously, it, it, I don't think my kids' passions are going to be candles. They thought that was kind of funny that that their, you know, guitar playing dad went into that. But uh, they get it. They understand what it's about. And showing them, you know, I always say it was important to teach them that twenty five. If you sell a candle for twenty five dollars, you don't make twenty five dollars. And uh, they've really learned that lesson, which is which has been important to me. But uh, yeah, the entrepreneurial spirit is what's going to guide us through. Uh, I think it's going to help some of us survive the unpredictability of, of the, the coming future. Man, I think we're, uh, you know, just just like the tech age and the industrial age, I think we're going to see another one of those in our lifetime that my kids are going to have to live through, where the entire uh, the entire world's going to change what what jobs are, and you know, my father. What my father did for a living, he was an auto mechanic at Battlefield Ford here in Manassas his whole life. Um, I know auto mechanics now that are, you know, half my age, but that's their career. But the job is not even similar to what my job, my dad's job was. You know what I mean? It's really changed. And and that's that's funny because we talk about like this, this box, right? Society puts you in a box as a kid and they say, this is kind of who you're going to be and what you're going to be. The problem is that that box what what people are put in it's, it doesn't exist by the time they get to the work age it's it's like you said it's moving so fast that the right. jobs are being eliminated and they and and I don't I mean I don't know where we're going because from the you look at the different parts of the work culture you know you have the you have the management that the white collar side and then you have you know kind of like the the queen bees and then you have the worker bees and you have people that have more of an educated job and and less of an educated, more of a labor oriented job as the, the automation and the different systems and the technology takes over those jobs. Where do these people go? Like, what is the right. next step? It's really scary. That's actually, you know, we're, we're talking about the same thing. One of the things that scared me the most was that, um, you know, as a kid, I was growing up, you know, I'm going to be a rock star. I'm going to be a guitar player. And, and, uh, I never got a fallback. I never, my parents were very supportive. They they didn't encourage me to get a fallback. They said, if this is what you're going to do, then go for it 100%, put your whole life into it. And I, I saw so many of my friends, you know, I'm 47 years old. And I, uh, you know, the my generation became the workforce right at the burst of the internet. And I saw so many of my friends, exactly what you said, uh, they prepared for jobs, went to college and, and, and worked really hard spent all their parents' money, took student loans and all that stuff only for the job not to exist, you, you know? And, and that scares the crap out of me. I, I laugh now because I just, I, I managed to ride the wave over that by playing guitar, the thing that everyone thought was stupid, but it, it still works for me. But um, I, that frightens me about that happening to my kids, man. It, it, it's, it's in, you know, that's what it is. You have to have the entrepreneurial spirit. There's always going to be money. There's always going to be currency. There's always going to be uh, commerce. And there's always going to be someone spending and someone buying. So to have the, the ability to, you know, learn how to how to make a dollar, not just work for someone, is uh, it, it's crucial in the world we're coming into, I believe. 
So, so when did that realization happen? When did you make that, that mindset shift? I think that there was a period in time where I was out playing the bars and making a bunch of money. Uh, not a bunch of money. That's really, you don't make a ton of money playing the bars. But at my age, I was excited to be making the money I was playing cover tunes for people. And um, all of a sudden, these people that were going to be doctors and lawyers, I was, they were bartenders at these bars and they were waiters and waitresses. And, and uh, it was, I, it, it was just in that club scene in the nineties when I saw all my friends not get the jobs they planned for. And like I said, some of them were, you know, do, doing, you know, working in the bars and working in the restaurants and stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I, you know, my ex-wife was a career bartender up until just a couple of years ago and, and made tons of money. But unless that's what you're planning on doing, it, it's not, um, do you get what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to figure Absolutely. out. Absolutely. And, and I'm a, I'm a couple years younger than you, but pretty close. So I, I remember when I got out of school, I, w- I was lucky. I was able to get a job in my, my field, but that's less, I, the statistic I heard is about 23% that actually work with their degree. So that is that true? That that's the latest one I heard. So that's about one out of four people actually are yeah. use their degree. And th- so the degree, yeah, I feel like college for me and, and even high school for that matter, it, it really teaches you how to learn, like how to go get the information. And sure. if, if you can take that out of it, I, I see the value in it in the sense that when you become an entrepreneur, if you take that path, which is where the country's going, everybody is not everybody, but a much more populated, specific, intentional growing towards this entrepreneur spirit. As you go right. that way, you have to figure out how to go get the information. And that is right. a huge part of it. And we should probably talk now, about that a little bit. How do you get, when you go into candles, like how do you figure that out? What do you do? Well, so real, real quick, I just want to make sure that everyone knows uh, if I've said something that make you think that I'm saying not to get a college education, that's not what I meant at all in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I hope I didn't come across that way. Absolutely I, you not. Know. Um, but you talk about the information. I think that that's, you know, the, the, the everything's accessible right now. I can find out anything I want to know by pressing a button. So, um, you know, as far as the candle company goes, uh, I spent six months really, maybe you know, technically I'm still, I mean, I mean, we're in eight years almost, and I'm still researching and developing and trying to make my product better. But I spent six solid months just hardcore learning how to do it, but it was internet based. I would, I would read and reread and look up things and type things. And you, you know, I, if you're like me, you'll, if you're researching something, you'll type a topic. And then you'll go like three days reading everything there is to read. And then you'll type again, the same topic will come up and I'll read it again just to make sure, or the same article will come up. I'll read it again to make sure I didn't miss something. And um, I mean, the entire world's education is at your fingertips in your phone right now. What, what you can find out anything you want to know. There, 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 it's funny to me, there's no excuse for not being incredible at anything you want to be, want to be right now. It, it's, unless you physically can't do something you want to do, or, you know, there's different mindsets and different brain mentalities. Some people, you know, for instance, the shining soul, we have a partnership. There's three of us. And I was telling one of my partners the other day, he's, an, he is probably the most business minded guy I've ever met in my life, but he'll overlook some things that I find simple and just come to me easy. And I love all not think of things that he thinks of. And when he brings them up, it's like, holy crap, how did I miss that? Um, it, it, there's multiple kinds of minds, but all the information is there. And, w- and one of the most important pieces of information anyone can have is that it's not easy to do it all by yourself. Surround yourself by with a team of people that that have different assets and different skills that you uh, you don't have and, and, and create a, uh, a monster, create a monster that can't, can't be stopped. <laughs> that, well, that's true. And you hit on, you hit on three really, really important points that I want to double back on. So, so the first one is the find the information and then reading it and then reading it again and reading it again and basically mastering the information. That's something that I see with, with entrepreneurs, um, especially the, the people that are trying to, you know, get there fast, kind of skip the, 
the foundation, the basis of building a business and they, they yeah. get that shiny object. They, they don't really master their business. They never really become an expert. They just go out there and try to start making money. Those people tend to have a very short run. They sometimes make oh, yeah, some quick yeah. money and then they're gone. So, so that's really important. And that's part of the reason you're successful uh, without even knowing you that well is because of, of mastering the topics and, and learning it. it. But the other thing is the information is out there. But I, I see that some people tend to get overloaded with the information. There's, there's so much information there. They really don't know how to ferret out what should I be reading? What should I not be reading? How, how, do, we, how do we do <laughs> all that? And then the third part is the circle of influence is getting around the right people. So you, you kind of right. hit on three really, really important topics that frame out yeah. what, so what if, drives if, success. If, interesting. Um, what you were talking about, the too much information and how to sort some of that out. Me, me and my one uh, partner, Darren, we talk and we joke a lot is, um, you know, you, you mentioned also people that rush. I actually tend to rush. I will study and I will learn, but I'm also in a hurry. I, I have a urgency that I want everything done right now. I want, if I have an idea, by the end of the day, I want to see that idea come to some kind of fruition. You know what I mean? And uh, I think there's a lot of people that do what I call prepare to prepare. And yeah, uh, and I, re- I equate that to the music business is um, there's so many bands when I was growing up that would just stay in the basement because they practiced until they thought they never thought they were good enough, which is, you know, you got to have a big ego to succeed in anything, but you practice and you practice and practice and before you got, realize that you, the songs you learned are outdated. You stayed in the basement too long and, and it passed you by. And I call that preparing to prepare where my mentality was, let's go out and learn this while we're doing it. Let's, let's, let's learn it and let's be great at it, but let's, let's start work right away. I got a band, got some songs and we started doing gigs. We weren't the greatest band. We probably weren't ready to do it, but I was, I was aware. Self-awareness is important. I was aware of that, but it was on the job training. And I don't care how educated you are on the job training is still the most greatest tool for preparation there is. And so, yeah, deciding how much of the information you need before you can get started. That's, I think that's kind of where you're going with that. That's a hard balance too. Preparing to prepare is, is, as much the depth of your business as jumping the gun and, and jumping in too quick. No, no, that that's very important. One of my business partners likes to say um, success loves speed. And what you're saying, that's exactly what, what he means is you have to get out there and you have to do it and you have to move fast, but you have to move fast intentionally in the right direction. So really what that comes down to is you have to know where you're going and then go as fast as you can to get there. Right. Well, I call it jumping off the cliff. Uh, if an opportunity lies in front of me, I will always walk to the door. I will always jump off the cliff. I will walk into the unknown. Um, you ask yourself a couple of questions. Am I going to hurt anybody or am I going to die? Or am I going to go to jail? Sometimes maybe it's worth going to jail for. I don't know. Never worth hurting anyone else and never worth dying. But there's a few questions, and if those questions um, are met, I'll jump off the cliff at any given time to get to the next level or to experience a, a different um, a different a different level. And uh, but the balance is my other two partners are a little more cautious. So now I find myself standing at the cliff a lot more often, looking down and seeing what's down there before I jump, which I think is is a we got a neat balance, and that goes back to that surrounding yourself with the right people. There's a, uh, there, there's so many different point of views. I'm one of those firm believers that there's truly no wrong or right. There's no black or white. There is nothing but gray area, and and so the most perspective you can get, everybody sees the world in a different way. And if you can surround yourself with a few people, because too many people, and then the wallet gets spread thin. You surround yourself with a couple of people that see completely different perspectives than you, which a lot of people think is a bad thing. Oh my God, he doesn't see what I see. That to me is like having insect eyes. You know, like the insects see in like 360 degrees or whatever. If you have a couple of people that can see every perspective and every surrounding, 
as long as your goal is the same goal, let's be honest, my three part, my two partners and me, you know, we all have different passions, but the goal is to be the biggest candle company in the world. The goal is to make the best candle in the world. And if we have three different possible routes to get there, just like your GPS gives you three options these days, that's better than one man doing it alone, if you ask me. No, it, it makes perfect sense. And then that's the whole whole power behind the mastermind is that exactly is putting the brain power of many to, to concentrate towards one focused effort. And yeah, but, but like I said, it's, it's gotta be many that bring different things to the table. If you have two guys that are exactly the same, that's not worth it. Does that make sense? It does. It, and that's, that's it because you're, you're, you're taking the unique perspective of the different people and the unique expertise. Yeah. And then you're, you're yeah, making something that's just that, that much more powerful. In my businesses, I've learned that I don't want anyone that agrees with me 100% of the time. I want to be challenged. I want to be questioned. And, and you know, I want to be right, but perspective is everything, man. You know, in any business you're in, perspective is anything. And everybody's a different kind of consumer. My one partner, Darren, is the kind of consumer that we call a collector. There's a guy that buys things specifically to collect and hope that their value increases. He's a big uh, music fan and he'll buy uh, vinyl records and he'll buy, you know, merchandise, but he'll inspect that merchandise to the, the you, you can't even dream of. He's the guy that will sit in the store and go through 30 of the exact same product till he finds what he considers the one with the most straight label, the most unfaded color you, you, you get where i'm going absolutely and, um, and then i'm the kind of guy that uh you know i don't care if my hamburger doesn't look like the ad it still tastes the same and i don't care um if the color on the candle is not exactly the same as the one in front of it, it it still smells the same um and so it's been a neat perspective me and him bouncing those kind of things together and my third partner sarah she is the ultimate um She's the ultimate standard consumer. She uh, she doesn't want to buy junk, but she doesn't care if it's a collector's item. And she's got her finger on the pulse of what the everyday person consumer would would be. She's perfect. Her value, as far as that is, is um, it's worth its weight in gold to me. Yeah. So when you add all those pieces together, that's pretty powerful. Yeah, I think. I've been pretty lucky, you know, but my point was, I don't ever want to be in business with someone just like me. If I'm sitting around having a conversation and so in that for an hour, I've found out that I agree hundred percent with everything someone says and they have the same exact vision. That doesn't do me any good. That's just giving some guy half my money that is doing the same thing I'm doing. You're, you're right on that, that respect. And that, and that the balance is, is, is really getting around the right people that, that can see the, you know, the long-term goal and then working from the different angles to get there. And that that's exactly. super powerful. Yep. So, so let's diverge a little bit, just given the, the age of my listeners, they're, they're right in that sweet spot. They're going to want to hear a little bit about your music. So let's just kind of, let's chat about that for a couple of minutes. Then we'll get back in. I want to talk more about your, about your sons and the family and all of that as well. So why don't you just kind of take it, just give us a little background on like what you're about on the, the music end and how you, how you got, how that, that started, like back to the days, because we talked in entrepreneurship about fear. You kind of brought it up about people being you know, scared to get out there or, or hide in the basement. So w- when you started playing guitar, I mean, did you ever get on, go on any crazy auditions where it was just like, hey, what's this guy doing? And then next thing you know, you're actually living it. Uh, you know what? So the interesting thing to me, I, I say interesting, it's, it's just been my life, but is uh, I've been playing guitar since I was five years old. My mother put a guitar in my hand, um, and I literally wasn't into it, so to speak. But then I found Kiss, and if we're that age group, you know Kiss. And I was five years old, and they had makeup on, and they were superheroes. And that was enough to make a kid, you know, they they, they were like cartoons I was watching. Mm-hmm. So I was able to find something within the music industry that um, – I could hold on to as a child. And then I was really into playing guitar. Uh, and then Van Halen came along. And, you know, in my fourth grade talent show, I was playing Kiss songs. In my sixth grade talent show, I was playing Van Halen songs. 
it's just all I ever did. By my by my senior year in high school, I was playing the clubs almost full time. Uh, so I never really did any auditions because I was always it was always my band. I was always starting the band and writing the songs and, and kind of doing that. Um, I also never really like I'm not a hired gun guy. I've been in Brett's band for almost 17 years, but I was an enormous Poison fan. And uh, like I would never just go on an audition and join some guy's band. Uh, I've had those opportunities. I've had people ask me, but I only do what I'm truly passionate about, what I would like to do. And um, so the opportunity came to play with Brett. And, you know, I'd played Poison songs in my high school talent shows. I played Poison, poison songs in my cover band sets all my life. And uh, I, I was a huge fan. So when that opportunity came, I took it. But as far as auditions and stuff go, I, I, that wasn't the world I was in. I was, it was always my world that I was working in. You laid out your, your path the way you wanted it to go and you made it happen. Yeah, I would say that. It's funny. Hearing that back almost sounds arrogant. I don't want to sound arrogant. I just, you just, you know, I, I had vision. I knew what I wanted to do. And and it wasn't about being a millionaire. The music stuff was never about making money to me. The music was a, um, it's funny, I go back and forth because I do have the entrepreneurial spirit, but I don't have the greed of, I don't need to be a millionaire. I don't, or a trillionaire, or a billionaire. Or, I, I, my fuel is solely um, making things better, whether it's making one person happy or making the world an easier place to live in. And the music business was just, um, I was very passionate about it. Music moved me. Uh, songs lived within my soul, different melodies, different things touched me different than, than I realized they were t- touching other people. And once you get that bug, you start to think to yourself, is there any way that I can make one person feel the way Van Halen made me feel? Can I make someone feel that way? Can I make their day better? And, and that's what drove me in the music industry, the passion to, and, but I wanted to do it my way. I wanted to create my music. I wanted to create my sound. Even though I played the cover, the cover clubs, um, I enjoyed it. That was kind of my thing playing the covers because they, they made people happy. You, you, you know, it, it was a really weird thing because I was pursuing an all original band and I was pursuing a record deal and I was pursuing their true success in the music business. And most people that do that don't, don't do the cover band circuit thing. And I was riding the wave of both of them because the cover band circuit was how you got paid. And, you know, you, you, the difference in making at 800 to a thousand dollars a night versus 50 bucks, it was a no brainer to me because I, I had to work. I didn't have a day job. So I would play covers and then some nights I'd play at all original clubs. And, um, I would just, I just dance to be my own drummer in every aspect. I stand here today by doing things almost exactly the opposite of what anyone would have said to do, whether it's the music business or the candle business. Yeah. And there's a, and there's a lot of truth to that. And that's, that's probably part of the reason you are where you are. Some of the biggest issues people run into is just following the bad advice from people that really don't have the vision or understand where they want to go. And they just kind of put right. a wall up. And that's a lot of my listeners where they're, they're kind of at that wall in their business and they don't quite know how to get to the next level. And they explain that, explain that if you don't mind a little more in depth, I'd love to talk about that. Well, yeah, we should. Okay. So you have like, like you, you, you've hit on so many just real good nuggets for people about, you know, not chasing the money. And if you, if you chase the money, it's, it's like written across your forehead and people start to call away and it just, it turns people off. And it does. I say this day and age more than ever, People can smell a fake. It, it, it's we're we're in a world. There's so much money and there's so much. Um, I, I don't even know what to say, but what I can say is, people can smell a fake. That's a. I don't know if that's exactly what I'm trying to say, but I saw you shake your head, so I think you get it. It, it gets the it gets the point across. It, it it's if you if you're if you're doing it for the money, then people are less inclined to to support what you're doing. If you're doing it for some higher cause. Like, like you said, it's the impact that, that somebody gets when they, when they hear a song. And, and I can relate to that. If you're out somewhere and there's a certain song that comes on and the crowd kind of erupts, somebody in that crowd was having a bad day and that just lifted them up. And you can't replicate right. that. And that's why the covers are so important because it's not your song that they're saying, hey, do I like this or not like it? They already know they like it. They already know right. it. It's, well, like they're, your- they're waiting, 
waiting for that song. But then when you play your own unique original music, it's it's coming from a different angle. I see both perspectives. And see, I get that. Yeah, I get that from the because I'm in the personal development space. So I'm working sure. with other business owners trying to to help them get to that next level. But I equate yeah. it back to even when I coach youth sports, watching a little kid trying to hit a pitched ball for the first time and they're sitting yeah. there and it's like you, you make one little adjustment like to their hands or to where their arm is or to how their shoulder is or to the, how they're tucking their chin. And all of a sudden they go from just kind of swinging and missing to making contact. And it's like their eyes bug out. And it's, it's like that for me is it, it's just, you can't replicate that. And I, I get this. Yeah. That that's what you it's get funny, out, it, out of the music. It's funny you bring that up. I am the most unathletic person in the entire world. And for a brief time, uh, there was a, a, a person in my life that was pretty insistent on me being a, a playing golf. And um, it was so, so awkward to me, very similar to the way you're talking about holding that bat. And uh, I was a grown man by the time this was happening, but I felt like a creature out of my skin every time I swung that club. And I remember, you know, this guy, Oh, it was my, it was my former father-in-law and still a great, great friend of mine. Uh, he would just walk up behind me and kind of put my arms in these different positions on the club. And then one day you, you get that swing and it all makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Similar to what you're talking about. With yes. The, so with some of all the parts, but before we, and, I, and I'm going to talk about the wall, but I want to talk about arrogance a little bit because you, you said it came across as arrogant, uh, kind of like hearing it come back at you of how you, you developed it. But I, I don't see it that way because at the, at the outset of the episode, you mentioned ego. And you said, hey, you know, in order to, to do this, you have to have some amount of ego, which, which I think there's a fine line between being confident and being cocky. But I think you have right. to kind of be on that line in order to go out there and say, hey, I'm confident enough in what I'm providing, whether it's a product or a service, that I'm willing to give it to somebody. And in exchange, I'm going to ask them to pay me a fair amount of money for that. If right. you don't have that confidence, if you don't have that ego or that arrogance, even depending on how you how you look at that, how can you, in good faith, sell it? And that's a lot of, I think, what's going on out there is people say, okay, I have this service or product that really is worth like $10, but I'm going to sell it for $10,000 because if I do some slick ads, somebody's going to opt in and somebody's going to go ahead and they're going to pay that money. And then by the time right. they realize what's going on, I'll have moved on to the next group of people. It doesn't matter. That's the part that burns me about what's going on in the industry these days. And that yeah. goes all the way back to what we were talking about before, about there's so much information out there. What do you take that's really tangible to your journey? What do you pay for? What do you get for free? How, what's that balance? And that's where your your mentorship and circle of influence really comes in. But in, in relation to the wall, so what happens is... And and it's a good time to talk probably about family as well. So you you end up you have this you have this dream or this vision of where you're going to go with your your business. And in order to make that happen, there there's such a cross between family and business, especially as you get into the the way that we do things nowadays, where you don't necessarily go to work nine to five. Like you said, you you didn't have a day job. You were you were playing a bar scene at night. So when when you when you have some type of a job like that, which is what we're trying to do, we're trying to create a lifestyle where we can be present for our kids when it makes sense to be present, and not when work tells us to be present. So as we do that, inherently you have to you're trying to get all of these parts and pieces together. So you know what it needs to happen. You know what it's going to take to get there. Then you have to somehow implement all that and put it all together. And you're trying to balance between making your family work, making your business work, and then making ultimately the customer or the client that's going to buy whatever you're you're providing work. You're trying to harmonize all these different things. And harmonize is a good part for that. It, it really is. And and what happens is back in my corporate days when I had my job, that was somebody else's problem. So somebody <laughs> else, you know, you, you say, Hey, I got a bad day. I'm gonna go take vacation. Well, when you're an entrepreneur. And you're, you're the last person. You have some partners, but a lot of people don't have partners. When you're that last person that you just can't, if you quit, you're done. And with, when you're right. done, you take your whole family with it financially. So it, 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 you, you almost end up 
um, I'm going to use the word trapped, where it's like you're trapped in whatever you're in and you, you made some bad decisions. So you've gotten yourself sequestered into this corner and you're not quite sure how to get out. What I find is most of the people that I deal with are like so close, they just don't realize it. So they need somebody sure. coming in from a different perspective, like something you said today, guarantee you somebody that's listening is going to say, oh my gosh, I just had an aha moment. And that's what we're doing is we're putting that message out there and helping people use the brain power of many people from different perspectives, just like you do with your business to help yeah. people as a group so that everybody is more successful. Not one person, not you, not me, not this person over here, but we're trying to grow as as a bunch of people doing the same thing, which is trying to make a better life for ourselves and for our families. And in the process, you know, impact people. In, in, in everything you're talking about, and, you know, again, I hear things different than a lot of people. Uh, I, I always try to look at the world with a completely different perspective. Um, it, as, as an entrepreneur and as a, you, you're clearly big on business to support your family, which is, uh, it's enormous. And the one thing you said is people are this close sometimes. Uh, I don't know. My camera's not doing that right. But um, the one, it, it goes both ways. You can work your whole, you know, 24 seven to support your family. But there's also a lot of people out there that I find, and I hate to say this, the family doesn't support them. Does that make sense? It makes they, perfect uh, sense. You need to feel like they believe in you. And, and uh, I've always been very fortunate to have a bunch of people that that basically think I can fly, and that's what's given me the um, the power. The power you need to surround yourself by people that don't go, "Oh, that would be great if that really worked out." Oh, your idea is really cool. There's a whole, I, you know I wrote a song years ago that never saw the light of day called "Only in the Movies," and I was going through this thing where I, I was um, really close with someone who acted like they wanted me to succeed in the music business. But when you would get deep in their conversation, you realize that they, they, uh, they didn't believe it really happened to normal people. Right. And, uh, and so there's a lot of, I don't want to call it fake support, but there's a, you know, the line in the movie was, uh, it's easy to believe that stars are bred on the Hills of Hollywood. I, I it's been so long. I don't remember the whole lyric, but, um, the, the, the premise was that real people can't be successful and this person thought they were supportive of me but i knew the message was it was it wasn't a message of oh man we're almost there you're gonna make it it was a oh you might get there someday but uh you'll never be kiss or you'll never be van halen and and i think there's a lot of people it, I, i'm having a, i've never said this before in all my interviews this this topic has never come up so so i'm this is brand new ground for me what i'm trying to say to you but the the there's a lot of people that think they support, but they don't really. You need someone that really, if you worked all day long to make the best candle in the world, I want to come home and know that the people around me think that I made the best candle in the world. I don't want to hear them go, oh, uh, it's, you know, you make a nice candle, but it's not as good as Yankee. You need that support. Does that make sense what I'm trying to say? So I'm sitting here and I got goosebumps while you're talking. So yeah, it makes perfect sense because let, I'm going to try to put it in perspective from from the way that I, I see it. When I have a new client, I, I just just onboarded a new client a couple of days ago. And in, in the initial call, one of my first questions was, um, how is the support? Because that is such an integral piece of not necessarily making it happen like right now, but when you get into the tough times, like maybe a client doesn't pay you, or maybe you're you have a, a problem with the candle production, so you're going to have a bad month or wh whatever that's going to be, or some competitor comes out and accuses you of stealing their idea or whatever that pro is going to happen. You need somebody that's going to support you during the good times, but also during the worst, darkest times that's going to say, right. hey, I know it's bad this month, but I still believe in you. And I still know that you're going to be the best out there because yeah. I know who you are and what you're made of. But what, what a lot of people get, I think, in, in talking with different people is they get what I would call shallow support, where it's like, hey, I'm going to support this idea, but I'm not going to support the blood, sweat, and the tears that goes into making this idea come to fruition. Is that what you're trying yeah, to say? Yeah, I'm not going to walk the front line with you. I'm over here, 
if it happens, I'll come to the party. <laughs> it, exactly. I mean? It's like, it's like <laughs> the people that follow you on social media. And um, Gary Vaynerchuk has this great thing where he talks about um, when, when he was, when he hit it really big, he was getting all these emails from people that he went to high school with that were, were saying, Oh man, it's so awesome what you did. No. And, and he went on and on this big barrage of how he answered emails, basically saying, well, you know, while you were enjoying yourself, I was working every holiday and every Saturday and every Sunday, and I was doing this and that, and I was building what I had. So we're, we're on, it's like we're on two different levels. So now that he's I hit it, it, people want to say, hey, I knew him in high school. And that's the support that I think you're talking about. That's yeah. What, and, that doesn't and you know what's funny? Bit. In the music business, that's exactly what happens. First of all, Gary V is, um, my partner Darren turned me on to him. I wasn't into a lot of that kind of stuff until uh, me and Darren started working together and he, he put me on the Gary V and I'm, I'm addicted to that guy now. Uh, <laughs> sometimes, you know, and I'm a straightforward, honest guy. I don't know if him or any of his followers watch your thing. Uh, sometimes I listen to that guy. I'm like, Holy crap, you're an idiot, man. And, uh, and then sometimes he has the most incredible, uh, eye opening information I've ever heard from anybody in the world. You know, he, you know, I, I believe in almost everything the guy says, but like, for instance, there was a thing a couple months ago where he was basically telling people not to go to college and, and all this stuff. And I remember thinking, man, he's, it's a, it's not his place. That's almost parenting. Stay out of that business. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, but, uh, the, the, the problem, and, and I don't really follow him too much, but I, but I do, I do understand why he does what he does and, and why people do gravitate to him. The, the one thing that, that I always tell people is when you, when you have any kind of influence, uh, with influence comes a tremendous amount of responsibility. Sure. So you, you have a responsibility to, like if you're given an, um, I, I recently spoke at my daughter's school. I, I'm not going to go in there and speak the same way to a bunch of fourth graders that I'm going to speak to, you know, budding entrepreneurs that are getting ready to leave college and go out and start their, their right. life journey or, or somebody that's, 50 years old that that's going to try to restart their life's journey or somebody that's going through a divorce or whatever it's going to be it, that the audience that you could say the same thing to different people and they can take it so different and oh, yeah, they yeah, can absolutely. run with it. And then that responsibility is something that any of us that get out here and, and share knowledge or share information or opinions for that matter. I, I think yeah. that's, it's, it's dangerous. And that's one thing going back to the beginning of the episode where we talked about where we're going that is one scary part is you have so many people disseminating knowledge that isn't true, that is, based, <laughs> and they're putting it out there and there's people that are believing in it and they're spending their, their life savings. They're ruining their legacies to go chase a bunch of BS. That's the scary part about where we're going. And that's where the circle of influence getting around the right people that can help sure, balance it but, really becomes important. But I will say those people chasing the lies, so to speak, I mean, that's been going on forever. What's the, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the, what's the old phrase selling oceanfront property in Arizona? You know, there, yep. there's always, there's always been somebody trying to fall for the, for, you know, someone trying to scam someone and someone that really wants to believe in the scam. You know, it, that, it's that's true. It's true. It's no different than somebody knocking on your door 20 years ago and selling you something. <laughs> yeah. It's You're going to put in a kitchen like floor in five minutes. It's just easier to it's easier to obtain that information and quicker now. You know, the one thing I just want to go back to say about the Gary Vee thing is, uh, you know, um, it happened to me even on a different level. And you know, uh, anyone that knows me knows I'm, I'm I'm grateful. I don't have a lot of I try not to have a lot of enemies. Maybe there's a lot of people that don't like me, but there's not a lot of people I don't like. Mm -hmm. um, but I found it really interesting that there was. Um, when I first, you know, Brett had that TV show, The Rock of Love, that did three series, and we were on it all the time. And I was a co-writer and writer of a bunch of the music on it. And um, the success blew up. And what I found interesting wasn't my friends that were all of a sudden more supportive of me. It was the enemies that I knew hated me. Yep. That I was just, I was getting texts and emails and and my spaces and facebooks from people that i i have clear memories of you know you're never going to make it you suck and you know and you're stupid and i mean true just 
they hated me. And all of a sudden I was getting, man, we always knew you'd be the one if anyone did it. And you had such drive and passion. And I remember that. And that we always knew you'd be a rock star. And it's like, I didn't get <laughs> mad. I didn't, and, and to be honest with you, I, I was grateful they finally joined the team. In a lot of ways, I, I, there was no anger, but there was a, I got a chuckle out of it. Does that make sense? Like, it does. Was, what, what's, I, what's the saying? Keep your, your friends close and your enemies closer? Isn't that the saying? Yeah. I try not to have any enemies. I know. So. It, I, it, it, <laughs> it, but inevitably, though, if you go out there and you, you share a message, you are going to upset the apple cart and you're going to get people that are not going to like what you have to say. Oh, and that goes, oh, with, that goes with it. That's all part of it. Especially this day and age, man. It's a every every everyone is a judge and a jury right now. Everybody, hundred percent, because everybody has a, a tricky choice. Thing. Yeah, and you know we're here. You know we're just outside of Washington D.C. and the, the political climate is uh, changed the world right now, man. It's it's dark, and uh, yeah. I, I hope we, I hope we pull out of that somehow. I hope we I hope we find. Uh, you know I make a joke sometimes because I'm really really. Uh, into the concept of of extraterrestrial life in other worlds, and I, it's it's a real huge part of my life. But I almost I almost invite the um, the what's that movie Independence Day scenario? Like bring us a bring us an enemy that we'll all fight against. There's got to be some way to bring the world together. <laughs> you know what I mean? To unify, yeah, you're right. It, for the There's got to be a way to unify. If that means, if that means we have to use all of our nuclear weapons to shoot down a, a big alien bug, more power to it. But there's there's got to be a way to unify, man. And I don't know how we just got to that. I don't know where we switched that subject, but that, that's an important part of my life. Important important part of uh, my goal is is I don't know how candles and music could do it, but somewhere in the line. I want to be able to help remind everyone that we're all one. And the, the cool thing is, is just by getting yourself out there, it allows you to, to share your message with people. And once you, once you yeah. have, once you have the brand, which, which you, you have the brand, once you have the brand, which is you, it gives you the ability to go out there and share that message. And that's, what's, that's, what's so awesome about the, the groundwork that's laid with the way things are done and, in this day and age versus, you know, generations before is everybody absolutely. has a voice. Everybody has the ability to do that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's funny when you say that people, t- everyone has a voice. I remember, and I'm sure, are you a musician of any kind? Are you in the music industry at all? Uh, other than I'm sitting here, I'm looking at my daughter's saxophone across my office that I used to play. That's, that's about as far as I go. So not, not from that end. The, um, I, I we talk about everyone having a voice. It, it reminds me of the M, the MP3 generation and what everyone calls the decline of the music industry. As a businessman, I'm sure you've read mm-hmm. an article or two here or there about the the fold of the music industry and and how it doesn't exist anymore, which in a lot of ways is, is true. Um, but I remember feeling different about it, you know. And it's funny because there's a lot of people in the music industry who still talk like it just happened last weekend. We're twenty some years into the MP3 already. Oh, yeah. it, you know what I mean? And uh, I, um, I remember thinking, "Oh my God, all the power is back in my hands." Like I remember when I started realizing I could send my song to anyone I want over an email, and that I could get in an, the old school AOL chat rooms or the CompuServe chat rooms and just meet people from all over the world. And I remember thinking. Uh, if I'm going to get in a chat room tonight and I'm going to meet one person from every state in the United States and if one person from every state listened to my, a song of mine today then I've spread my music farther than I ever could have before this era. Does, does that make sense? It, it really does and that's, that's the same way that we grow businesses these days. It's the same, same concept. Yeah. Well that's what I'm trying to relate. The, I, I remember it being so heavy in the music industry that feeling like the weight had crushed and that everyone felt like the industry had died and the world had been robbed. But what it it, it may have made us it may it did put an end to the rock star because all of a sudden all of a sudden um, anyone had the opportunity to have a hit song. So all of a sudden rock stars didn't look 
is much like superheroes because they really might have been your neighbor. And before you knew it, you might have been your favorite song might have been created in a basement in your neighborhood. And you didn't even know it. And uh, and that's the same thing with business today that, that's that been passed on. There's so many people that I, I guess it's, it goes back to the same thing we've been talking about from the beginning. There's so many people afraid of the future. People hate change. People hate what might be. Just jump, man. Just jump. Take your idea and jump and run and navigate. And I mean, be prepared. But there's there's a lot of fear. Fear stops success. That is a great place to segue into the next segment. That that fear stops success. That's huge. So like I mentioned at the outset, I'd like to encourage you to take a simple step that so many failed entrepreneurs miss and find out where your business stands today. We've talked about a lot of different things all over the place today, and it really comes down to understanding um, what what's your strengths and what your weaknesses are and what you can get help with. So a good place to start is go to the 10factor.com. That's T-H-E, the number one zero, F-A-C-T-O-R.com and grab a free copy of the 10 Factor Personal Assessment and see where you where you really stand. And, and Pete, it was, it was so fun having you here today. How do my listeners uh, find out more about, about what you stand for? Where do they go to find you? Um, probably the best way to find out what I stand for would be to, to pick up my book. Um, the book's called The Moments That Make Us. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. Uh, very, very proud of, very, very proud of that book. But other than that, there's social media. Um, you know, there's official Pete Evick which is kind of a fan based thing for, um, for my music, uh, on Facebook, it's called official Pete Evick. And then there's, uh, Pete Manassas Evick, which is used to be my personal account, but now it's more where, uh, I do business and, you know, um, and then, uh, like, like that's more where I talk about shining soul. And then there's shining soul is on all the different platforms. And then there's Pete underscore Evick, at Instagram, but I, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm doing this on the phone, so I dropped the phone once in a while. Uh, the the one thing I'll say about anyone that um, might seek me out on my social media, you know, I, I don't I don't do a lot like Gary V, and I don't do uh, I don't talk a whole lot. I just try to be positive on my social media presence. It's more of a um, it's more of just trying to spread the word that uh, I think the social media stuff is is um, I hate negativity and so many people use it for the wrong thing. And, uh, you know, everyone does have a voice. It's true, but that doesn't mean everyone has to bitch all day about everything that happens. And so if you sort me out on social media, you're not going to find a lot of entrepreneurial stuff. What you're going to find is me trying to be uplifting inspiration to the world. That's, that's awesome. And that's, and that's what I think what a lot of people are looking for is, is just somebody to, to make them smile. And that's, yeah, it's what that, that's what it all started. That, yep. that, that is, that's my entire life started with hoping someone, hoping I'd make someone smile the way Van Halen songs made me smile. That, yep. And we talked about that today. That's awesome. So uh, you listeners out there, if you happen to be tuning in today for the first time, you got a, you got a treat with Pete. Um, if you're on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, or any of the other platforms we're on, go ahead, take a moment and subscribe so you don't miss any any other great guests like like Pete today sharing his knowledge and and so much information for you guys and and while you're there if you like what you hear go ahead and leave us an honest review. Uh, Pete, thanks again. It was so fun having you. Thank you. That's great. I appreciate you taking the time. We'll talk soon. Hey, hey, listeners, do me a favor. Go out there, try to impact somebody. Until next time, Tim Michael, the Ten Factors.